Welcome back. Bronx Impact seeks to dismantle structural racism in the South Bronx by working closely with community members and organizations to identify challenges and uncover solutions. One of those challenges is Bronx digital equity. What is it? Here to share more is Rose DiStefano, Senior Director of Collective Impact at Bronx Impact and the Children's Aid Society. Welcome, Rose. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. For those who are not familiar, I gave a little bit of background, but can you tell us more about Bronx Impact and your mission? Yeah. So you got it right. Our mission is to dismantle structural racism and address long-standing and unjust inequities in the South Bronx so residents can realize the community's shared vision of a vibrant neighborhood with infinite opportunity where people aspire to live, work, and raise families. And we do this by bringing together Bronx residents, nonprofits, businesses, and government officials to implement solutions to increase social mobility in historically divested communities. Thank you so much for sharing, Rose. And how has the impact, um, the pandemic shifted your work? What types of resources and services has Bronx Impact been able to provide through this time here in the Bronx? Our, our work has shifted in a few ways. So we really doubled down on our efforts around our online resource website called my.bronximpact.org, where people can find services and programs in their neighborhood by typing in their zip code. Over 8,000 residents have used my.bronximpact.org since March and also created a call center and staffed that with 25 young people in the Bronx offering support in seven different languages. We knew that the digital divide, um, like with that di digital divide, people needed a different way other than a website to find the support that they needed. Uh, we also, we, we host a lot of convenings. And so rather than you know, focusing these convenings on the very long-term issues, we started to host convenings that were more focused on emergency relief. And so you know, we shifted our model a bit and were able to help in one instance, over 300 child care centers, many that were owned by black and brown women, uh, apply for PPP loans and get access to supplies like diapers and masks so that they could stay open. Um, we created a letter for essential workers who were traveling after curfew. Remember when there was a curfew? Oh, yes. uh, because people were being fined for for traveling from their jobs um, from you know a lot of essential workers who are working at hospitals service agencies uh, right now and and summer we've been working with schools to implement a more holistic healing centered approach for students parents and teachers knowing that you know especially as mental health has become more and more prevalent um, in low-income communities. This is something we really wanna see show up in the schools. And we've also played an advocacy role with the Mayor's Office of Food Policy, the Department of Education, and the administra Administration of Children's Services to correct policies that had unintended consequences negatively impacting Bronx families. Uh, the last thing I'll mention is about the Jerome Avenue Revitalization Collaborative, also known as JARC, which is led by our partner Jobs First NYC. Um, they've launched a hub for employers and workers to get the support they need to stay in the neighborhood around the Jerome Avenue corridor, despite the rezoning. And they're trying to, and I think successfully now, shifting some of the wealth that's coming into that community so that it stays in the neighborhood. So now that we're out of emergency mode, I mean, we're still in a crisis in this pandemic, but it's not as rapid, I think, as, as it was in March, April, and May. We are focusing again on those long-term systems change um, issues and examining our different systems, identifying root causes, and hosting community conversations to reimagine a future for the Bronx. So again, so that realize, uh, residents can realize the community's shared vision of prosperity and vibrancy in their neighborhood. Absolutely. Thank you so much for sharing, Rose, all the services and resources that are being offered to families during these tough times and how we're all still sticking together even throughout the pandemic and, you know, all the difficulties 
around politics and all that good stuff in the Bronx. Um, Rose, I wanted to explore one topic that you brought up. Um, families and children in the Bronx have long faced something called the digital divide or tech disparity. Can you help us define these terms and why the Bronx is so affected by this? Sure. So the digital divide speaks to a lack of connectivity and tech literacy. The problem is that 40% of New York City households lack the combination of home and mobile broadband, including 18% of residents, that's 1.5 million people, who lack both. This is a data point from the New York City Internet Master Plan that was released earlier this year. When we're talking about tech disparity, we're looking at how those 1.5 million people don't have a strong enough connection to sign on to Zoom classes, sign up for telehealth appointments, access city eviction prevention portals, sign up for unemployment benefits, or even find food on things like the Get Food NYC website that the city launched during COVID. In the Bronx, there are over 265,000 people who are not connected to the internet and are at a clear disadvantage. It's not just that people can't connect, it's that their inability to connect is, it's creating a scenario where they are more at risk than those who are food secure, have stable homes and stable jobs. It only makes sense, no? Um, and recently, the Bronx Borough President Ruben Diaz Jr. held the Tech Equity Day of Action. Um, he stated that out of 200,000 students in the Bronx, 84,000 received um, tech devices for remote learning. So that leaves uh, 116,000 kids, you know, they don't have access to these devices. Just to put it in perspective, these are only families that have responded to the surveys. It's not counting everyone else, no? Um, just tell us a little bit more about what took place that day, Rose, and how Bronx Impact is spearheading the initiatives with other organizations and the BP's office in order to get help and not only bring up the issues, but provide solutions as well. Absolutely. Yeah, well, one thing I'll say is that we are not moving alone. We have to work together and we are collaborating deeply with our other partners that are leading in this work. Um, and so the Bronx Borough President's Office invited Bronx Impact, South Bronx Rising Together, The Point, uh, and the Bronx Community Foundation's Tech, Equ Tech Equity Coalition, which is led by DreamYard, uh, to host an event and, and bring light to the Bronx digital divide. We know that this has been an issue, you know, since March, it's been an issue even before March, but it's, it's, it's been too long now and we're still not seeing the changes that we need in kind of urgency and um, immediacy. So the message uh, is that we have to keep fighting for equitable access to education so that all children, regardless of their race, their gender, geography, and socioeconomic status, have the same opportunity to learn. At the event, there were some elected officials. Um, Johnny Peralta from The Point showed us uh, his internet in a plastic bag to demystify the internet for Bronx residents. And some parents spoke and advocates and then a, a student named Lucky Islam also spoke about her experience and those of her, her peers feeling forgotten, left behind and that they, they demand justice. So we created a list of demands which were read by the borough president and are now, uh, we are all in the process of co-authoring a sign-on letter which will be sent around next week. Rose, can you share what types of demands um, community members, advocates and organizations like Bronx Impact are making? Yes, thank you. Yes, so there are, there are five demands. The first is that the DOE needs to provide appropriate devices to all students immediately. We have to ensure that students and families have um, equitable access to learning devices, and the DOE needs to provide those, uh, the ne necessary technology. So this is computers and tablets, hotspots um, to all students, and especially for students that are living in, in shelters. The second demand, we need to improve communication to families around the distribution of devices. The DOE need to put better systems in place that prioritize communication to families regarding the status of their request for a learning device. And parents and caregivers, once they've placed a request for a device, they should be able to, uh, to track those requests in a timely manner 
and know when it's when it's going to be arriving so that they can plan appropriately around that. And we can do that over text message. It just needs to be implemented. We need to hold internet service providers accountable, also known as ISPs. So ISPs they've become gatekeepers to student success. Without affordable and accessible internet access, students are unable to complete assignments and, and to learn, making it nearly impossible for them to be successful academically. ISPs must provide pathways for subsidized, free, or affordable internet access, and the city needs to hold those ISPs accountable. The fourth demand that we need to institutionalize technology assistance for students and families. It's not effective or efficient for families to wait for long periods of time on a call line or to wait for the DOE personnel to return their call reg regarding technology assistance. DOE schools need additional funding and support to provide their own technology assistance to teachers and to families. The system should always include ways to escalate cases that are unresolved in a manner that's timely and transparent for both parents and teachers as any online technology support system would do. And the last demand, uh, though, you know, we have others, but we're really trying to keep it to these five demands is that we, we need to ensure the quality of remote learning. This looks like the DOE providing accurate and timely reports on how students are engaging with online learning, how learning loss is being accounted for, and what policies and practices will be put in place for students who are struggling to navigate the complexities of online learning. Additionally, there needs to be enforced standardizations of remote learning teaching and what pedagogies are utilized to increase the likelihood of learning and retention and virtual support systems should also be offered to students that are facing learning barriers. These are students with disabilities, multi-language learners, and students um, who are behind target le levels. So we really need to come together and, and fight for our children because all children deserve to learn, uh, regardless of their, their race, gender, geography, or socioeconomic status. Um, that, that should not determine their ability to access quality education and opportunities. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Pearls, for sharing. And let's say someone is tuning in. How can they stay connected with you and learn more about Bronx Impact as well as, as Bronx Digital Equity here in the community? Sure. Yep. So you can always go to our website, bronximpact.org, and connect with me there. You can also sign up for our newsletter and get updates. We're on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And in if you're looking for resources or programs or just support, um, you can always visit the my.bronximpact.org website or our call center, which is 646-762-7483. And I know Bronx Impact is also gonna show that number as well, but we would love to connect with you and, and support. Thank you so much. Rose Despano, Director of Collective Impact at Bronx Impact and the Children's Aid Society. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Folks, again, to find out more about tech equity in the Bronx, follow at Bronx underscore impact on social media. Additionally, if you need food, my Bronx Impact is here to help. Call the number that Rose provided, 646-762-7483. It's right at the bottom of the screen. Or you can visit bronximpact.org for more information and updates. We'll be right back.